boys and girls, welcome back. Um, we're going to do a little overview um, of issues I'm having with this pile of bolts. Um, it's an abomination of, you know, used junk I had and other people's used junk and lots of booger welds and, you know, just stuff done on a budget. You know how that is. So, quick overview. What we're going to talk about here is this truck, when I put it together, um, turbo placement is not ideal at all. Turbo is in between the radiator and in between the engine right here. The problem with that is um, it gets hot and your exhaust, all your hot side is right there going right in front of the motor. Turbo's there, gets hot, downpipe's coming out the fender. Long story short, it heat soaks extremely fast. Um, uh, if we're talking intake air temp. Um, so I'm hoping we can rectify this situation somehow. Um, by either changing what I'm about to tell you we're going to change or we're going to go with a bigger radiator. I'm not sure yet. Um, my first uh, thought with this is when I put it together, again, terrible turbo placement, but it works and it's always worked and it, you know, I only just had to fix it. It's been together for a couple years now and I just had to start welding some cracks in the hot side. It's all hard mounted to the engine, to the manifolds, to the cylinder heads. Um, there's no flex joints, there's no nothing and it just started cracking now, two years later. Um, I literally built the hot side out of junk exhaust I had hanging around my shop, my death trap of a garage here. Um, built it out of scrap exhaust. Um, I think the only thing I spent money on was Pontiac G8 GT manifolds and a T4 flange I got from my, one of my local speed shops, Next Gen Performance in Spencer, Massachusetts. Um, yeah, so built it on the cheap, have always built it on the cheap. Um, now we, here lies the issue, bought the motor, for $200, including the wiring harness, didn't end up using the wiring harness, had a standalone unit gave, uh, given to me using the stock ECU. Um, was told the engine would overheat, even with the thermostat out, it would overheat. I'm like, all right, probably needs head gaskets. Went through, did head gaskets, uh, you know, did pack 12, 18 springs, did um, springs, uh, valve seals were newer. Um, you know, intake gaskets, did all that when I put it together. Uh, and when it came to the cooling system, I was like, oh, well, let's put a 160-degree thermostat in there and, uh, you know, see if, it, uh, see if it helps. See if the 160 thermostat helps. Um, might have made things worse in my situation. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. I'll show you why right now. So moving on, this is her, 78 to 75, 72 pound injectors, you know, booger welded hot side, VS racing components, 50 mil gate, 50 mil blow off, my trick little uh, LSX computer mount, made myself with some valve springs, some bicycle chain, left it rusty, you know, people love that, I don't know why. It's like the best part. It's a car show to go to. They love that part. Um, relocated coil packs on either side to the fender well. Harness done by yours truly. And don't get me wrong, it's an absolute mess in this thing. You know, I don't care. Got the, uh, got the fun tires on. Talk about that later. Just added this. Pretty cool. Trick little, uh, trick little teardrop here off the other side for the wastegate. I think it's pretty gangster. Made out of scrap exhaust as always. Um, as I'm going on, obviously here's lies our problem. Inch and a quarter radiator core. Engine's right here. Turbo is not in a good spot. Obviously we have 28 inch by, I don't know, 
I don't know the measurements of the intercooler. All I know is there's an intercooler there. Um, <laughs> less than ideal fan position. Fans are right in between the intercooler and the radiator. They're smack dab. So they're actually pushing air this way, pushing through, which isn't ideal. Obviously, anybody you talk to, you want puller fans with a shroud. Yeah, well, can't really do that in this position. So, like I said, first step, when I built it, I'm like, hey, I'll put a 160 stat in it. All will be well. Maybe it'll, you know, do its thing. It'll help. No, it doesn't. And I'll tell you why. Just like that, we are back. So, got my Sharpie here. It's paper. I'm going to make a little diagram of pretty much exactly what you need to know. And I know it's been covered, probably. I had gotten this idea, because I'm having this problem, from Bad Luck Garage. Um, great guy. I watched, grew up in the past couple, two, three years watching his videos of tuning and cool LS stuff. So it's pretty cool to take something from him and reiterate it my way. Um, so shout out to him. So, to, you know, helping me. Um, now I'm just trying to reciprocate it to you guys. So, uh, let's see. Make a quick diagram here. And I used to draw, so I'm going to try to do a good job, but I'm not that great at it anymore. Okay. See that? It's your engine, right? Engine. Put some pulleys on it for the fun of it. Boom. If you can see that, got some pulleys on it. Now we're getting fancy. <clears throat> now we have we have a radiator. Let's write. Let's scribe down a radiator real quick. Boom. Boom. Little rectangle thing looking fucker. You got our radiator shroud. It doesn't matter because I don't have a radiator shroud anyway because I'm dumb. Uh, boom. We have upper hose, radiator, got the shroud. You see where I'm going with this. If you don't, just log off, please. You're not worth it. I'm just kidding. We all start somewhere. <laughs> okay. Right down, lower hose. Boom. Lower hose. Right there, lower hose. Now, on an LS, the lower hose connects to the thermostat. So we're going to put the thermostat thermostat. Okay, take it all in. In my case, I have a 160 degree thermostat, which is a Massive problem in my case because I have an inch and a quarter core radiator, smallest one they made for an 86 or roughly in a year, half ton Chevy. It's a problem nonetheless. Um, so basically, this is how it works okay? The thermostat not only lets cool air, sorry, the thermostat not only, I'll show it to you guys here. The thermostat lets hot hot coolant, water, whatever is in your coolant system. I don't know, a lot of race guys run water because if you let it go on the track, it's a mess. Whatever water's used to clean up, blah, blah, blah. Um, water, hot water comes out into the radiator, right? But it can only do that if your thermostat opens and lets cool air into the engine. Obviously, that's the point of the thermostat. It opens at 160 degrees. Now, if this guy right here, right, radiator, that's not big enough to maintain 160, and like I said, in my case, my truck cruises at 178 degrees, um, so if this is not efficient enough, which in my case it's not, what happens is the thermostat constantly stays open, because, especially when, so when I'm cruising, it's fine, right? great. As soon as I stop, hot, you know, 
gets hot, it gets hot, it gets hot. Thermostat opens. Yeah, well, the, the coolant from the engine is hot, circulates, thermostat stays open, and it's, it's like a constant cycle because it's not efficient enough. You're not cooling the, you're not cooling the coolant or the water down. It's never closing. Okay, so if your radiator is not cooling all that coolant, and then it's opening, and then it's going in the engine, then hot's, hot coolant's going in there, getting cooled down. If it's not making a differential in temperature, your thermostat will never close. That's a problem, obviously. So the problem is, thermostat stays open, and hot, it gets hotter, and then it gets hotter, and then it gets hotter, because the engine continues to make heat, engine bay is making heat, radiator doesn't cool it down, so then what do you do? You know, you shut it off, it boils over, whatever. Now, because it's a 160, that's my problem. My radiator's small. Doesn't have the efficiency to keep it at a, like I said, in my, in my case, it cruises at 178. A lot of guys might have it run different, you know what I mean? So I bought from my local O'Reilly's a 180 thermostat. So the whole point of that is now with a 180, right? You warm it up, you warm it up, you warm it up. Once it reaches 180, let's let's cold air in, cold sorry, cold water, cold coolant in. Let's the hot coolant and radiator now, because it's 187 degrees. So say when I put the 187 degree thermostat in it, it might cruise at 200, which is fine. LS has run at 210. We all know this: 205, 210, 215. Um, now the the coolant is staying here longer okay so when you're cruising it's staying here longer when you're sitting it's staying here longer so if it's not as efficient the fans and everything can help cool it down but it's not opening right away because now your thermostat's 187 degree um, temperature instead of 160 so it's going to keep it cooler in there and then when it transfers da -da -da -da, it gets cooler it closes right once it gets in there, it's going to close. Then your hot fluid's going to go back in the radiator, and it's going to stay closed because now your thermostat's 100, you know. But wait, this is all in theory. If this radiator can't do this, if it's not efficient enough for a 187, then I just need a radiator with two or three more cores. It's that simple because it gets so hot in the engine bay. Or bigger fans. So I might, this 187 might not fix it. I don't know until I put it in there. So that's my first step. We're going to try a 187 degree thermostat from O'Reilly's. I don't know what stock is. I think stock's... I thought stock was like 190. Supposedly it's 197. I don't know. So anyways, we're going to put in the 187. I can't write. We're going to put the 187 thermostat in it now. And we're going to try to see if my radiator and my fan set up now, today's a hot day. We're in Massachusetts. It's a Friday, whatever, August 5th. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. Um, all I know is it's hot, and it'd be a good day to test it because this is one of the hottest days of the year. Um, and this is when it's going to show its ugly side. If your system isn't efficient enough, this is when it's going to be ugly because it's hot out. And ambient temp is crazy high. For me right now, ambient temp's, you know, I'm sure it's high 80s right now mid you know lower 90s we just had a storm so it's cool now regardless um i'm gonna put the 187 in there see if it's any efficient but that's how that works if your coolant's not sitting in the radiator to get cooled down long enough because your thermostat's too small then your thermostat's never going to close it's never going to close because the fluid coming in is hot the fluid coming out of the engine is hot and it gets hotter and it gets hotter and it gets hotter and it's hotter because it's a never-ending cycle because your thermostat never shuts. Okay, so like I said, a 187 might not fix it, but we're going to try and see if my radiator is efficient enough at least for a 187. They make a 190, well, what's three degree difference? I don't think it's going to make a difference. So if a 187 doesn't work for me, either my radiator is that small, my fans do not work that good, and if that doesn't fix it, then I have some sort of other issue. But I have a feeling... Um, probably going to be need a bigger radiator, at least at the least, better fans.
because this is a V8 radiator. It's an inch and a quarter core, but it's still made for a 305 V8. I only went up to a 327. This engine doesn't get hot. It's because of where the turbocharger is in the engine bay. So uh, I guess what you guys would gather from this is don't put your turbo in between the radiator and the engine like me because I'm dumb. But I did it for cheap. I did it for, you know, in most cases, free. You know, you want to talk about money. This thing was built like, I don't know, I probably got four grand into it. You know, used parts, welding it all together myself, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's what you gather from this. Make sure your cooling system's efficient enough. Turbo placement is key. Thermostat. You probably don't have to touch a factory thermostat. I don't know. You don't need, you're not going to, yeah, you may gain some horsepower from running at 170, 180 degrees, maybe. But today's oils and today's engines, they like 200 degree, they like 210. It's not like old stuff, you know. Um, and from what I've read, detergent and oil activates when it's really hot. I'm not saying that oil's the same temperature as the coolant. It's not. But, you know, the, clean, the detergent and the oil activates at a certain temperature, so it's got to be hot. If it's not hot, your engine's not cleaning itself. Uh, your engine's not boiling off the water, that's that, their condensation that's in the oil. Okay, so if your engine's running at 150 degrees... And you, that condensation is there, and it's never going to leave because you're not heating it up enough to uh, boil it off or get rid of it. Um, a lot of guys that run methanol in E85, they deal with that. But that methanol is more from it passing through the rings and getting into your oil from idling and stuff. Um, but you get you do get a lot of it for E85 too. So, Anyways, that's just a quick little video. I'm probably going to do this. I might add some more to the video, but for now, um, it's goodbye. Um, you know, quick little tech video. Um, I'll be back. I'm going to over, I know, I know there's some people that are like, why haven't you put the turbo kit in your 7.3? I know. Work, life, girlfriend, family, personal problems. I just got hurt the other day. You know what I mean? I'm making this video because I got spare time on my hands. It is what it is. I'm trying to get into the YouTube thing, but we'll get to everything. I still got my white truck. I have the Zephyr that we just bought. Me and a buddy just bought. I have my crew cab 88 square body we just bought. You know, I'd like to get in more detail with the with the white 7.3 on the turbo kit. We'll go over that on my homemade turbo kit. It's all coming. Be patient. Please like, subscribe, click the bell so you get all my notifications if I put another video out there. Tell people about it dislike it like it it doesn't matter man it's it's all for the same thing i'd love to get on this youtube journey you know it's it's you know this is the new age i love to do this for a living and it's literally cost you guys nothing to help me do this for a living so anyways that's it for now i'll give you guys an update if it works if it doesn't work and we'll continue on for now peace out all right so Figure I'd add to it a little bit. Get the thermostat housing out. Uh, the 160 dropped in my pans down there, so got the 180 new gasket. And what I'd recommend anytime you're playing around, just go inside here and just clean all this out because obviously you're this is what makes your seal, you know. So let that, I drained into the pan, we're gonna reuse the coolant. Put that in, gather it up, fire it up. Um, I'm gonna have to get on the laptop on HP Tuners, change the fan settings, because I have them down low for the 160 stat. Probably change them to, I don't even know, I'm trying to think right now. Probably have them come on at We'll have to see what it cruises at first before I set the fans. See what it cruises at first because that kind of determines where the thermostat is. Because like I said, it's not going to cruise at 187 like the thermostat advertises as. Because my 160 cruised at like 174, 178. So we'll see what it cruises at first and then go from there and set the fans per, you know, where it needs to be. So we'll get right back. I'll throw it back together and get on the laptop and I'll show you guys what's good. All right, so real, real quick, 
I got the truck running. I got the 187 stat in it. Uh, let's go check out what she's running for cooling temp. So we've been sitting at 208 for about two, three minutes now. So that's good. That's good. We're doing good. So another trick I want to show you guys is the paper trick. So basically with the paper, what you do is you put the paper up to the grill and it kind of gives you a ballpark of how well your fans work. Uh, you know, you want your hood closed, hoods closed. You know, put the put the paper up to the uh, put the paper up to the grill. See if it's actually sucking enough air to keep it cool. So let's, let's try it. Ready? Just looking at that, you know that uh, it works. You know, so now we're up to two. We're at two ten now, but I don't. It seems to be working. This thing, this thing, what it would do before is it would actually just with the one sixty stat in it, it would just keep creeping like every minute. Every minute you sit there and let it idle, it creep up two ten, two fifteen, two twenty. So. I say, I'm not going to say anything yet, actually. Let's let's go look at the cooling temp again. So I don't want to burn all my bridges here just yet. Get all my ducks not in a row, but here, I'll show you guys the uh, data log here. <laughs> Quick. Look at that. 210, baby. 212. Which it's actually starting to starting to creep a little bit but that's that's I mean it's been sitting here for five minutes idling so that's really not that's really not that bad in retrospect so right now it would have gone way over by now so I don't know it might work we'll see so that's it for now fellas